Okay, welcome. So, uh, now we're going to have a little chat about air speed. So, first of all, uh, why is air speed important? Well, uh, the main reason is that if you fly too slowly in an airplane, the wing won't provide enough lift uh, to sustain flight. It'll stall and you'll hit the ground, crash and probably die. And uh, if you go too fast, you'll throw the wings off, crash and die. So as the aim of flying generally is to go from A to B uh, and avoid crashing and dying, that's why our speed is important. So if we go inside to the cockpit and we have a look, you can see there, there's a few different air speeds. So at the minute the autopilot's on, we're at a thousand feet and we're on heading select. So we're flying over the sea and we're good. We're pretty low, but we're fine. So you can see in our speed tape here, we're doing, well, 251 and a half knots, but it's set for 250 knots. So we're doing roughly 250 knots. So this is our indicated air speed. Below that you've got your TAS, T-A-S, and this is our true air speed. And then you also have TAS here, but you have your ground speed also. So G-S stands for ground speed. So we'll go through them quickly and simply for flight sim. So this isn't what you're gonna need to pass your ATPL exams, but it's more than enough theory to to know what you, what you need to use and when in flight sim. So, First of all, we'll look at our indicated airspeed. And uh, indicated airspeed, uh, or IAS, is the most important, really, uh, airspeed of all. So this is the speed that the aircraft is moving through the air around it. So this is what we use generally to fly um, until we go to higher altitudes, and then we use Mach number. So you can see here at sea level, a thousand feet, the indicated air speed is the same as the true air speed and the same as the ground speed. So the second thing uh, we'll talk about is how indicated air speed is measured and it's measured through a pitot tube uh, which looks like this. And so a pitot tube works by the air uh, outside the aircraft passing through this little hole in the front. If you like putting it simply, how many molecules are flying into that tube? So the faster you go, the more molecules you get in that tube, the slower you go, the less. So pretty simple. So we've also got our true air speed. Our true air speed is calculated, uh, it used to be calculated by a gauge in the cockpit, which you would put in things like uh, the temperature and um, what altitude you were at. So it basically uh, used your density altitude, if you know what that is. If you don't, don't worry. But it used that to calculate your true air speed. So, um, True airspeed is the speed of the aircraft relative uh, to the air mass that it's flying through. So that's not really important uh, for flight sim. You don't really need to worry about true airspeed that much. It's not that useful if you're just kind of doing um, hobby kind of flight sim flying. And uh, to be honest, it's not used a lot in um, airline flying anymore because we have GPS. And as a result of having GPS, we have our ground speed. And our ground speed is what you would use for working out um, calculations like speed distance time calculations and working out your distance, uh, how long it's going to take you to get somewhere uh, going by the speed that you're flying out, all that sort of good stuff. Ground speed we've touched on a little bit. Um, so this is simply the speed of the aircraft flying over the ground. Um, and so that will be the same as your true airspeed generally, except for it's affected by wind, obviously. So if you have uh, a 50 knot headwind then this will be your ground speed will be about 50 knots less than your true air speed so yeah if you're flying from uh, the UK or Europe to the United States you've probably noticed as a passenger that the flight on the way out so from the UK or Europe to the United States takes a little bit longer than the way back and why is that well that's because there's really really strong tailwinds on the way back so there's a really strong jet stream that flies and the North Atlantic from the United States and Canada and it, the position of it varies but basically it's over the North Atlantic generally and on the way home we try to fly in that so we have a stronger tailwind. So the aircraft will actually be flying at the same indicated airspeed more or less or at the same Mach number which is more likely at high altitude so it'll be flying at the same Mach number on the way out and the way back but the way back will be much faster because you have a higher ground speed. 
So I uh, hope that explains it a little bit. So the other speed we need to talk about is our Mach number. And so our Mach number is the speed of the aircraft relative uh, to the speed of sound. So if I click the Mach number button here, you'll see it's quite low. Uh, the speed of sound at sea level in ISA conditions, by ISA conditions I mean uh, ISA standard pressure, so it's an international standard atmosphere which is 2992, don't really need to worry about it, or 50 and 15 degrees Celsius, so that's what they call a standard day in aviation. So if we press the button to switch to Mach number, you'll see that our Mach number at the minute is currently Mach 0.38. So that's because at sea level the uh, speed of sound is 661 knots we're only doing 250 knots so that's our ratio to the speed of sound currently so we don't use Mach number at low altitude we only use it at high altitude and we'll only use it from about uh, 25,000 feet up so let's go to 25,000 feet and we'll show you uh, how that works so just quickly as we climb you can see that we're holding a constant indicated airspeed of 250 knots so we're climbing up at a 250 knots indicated airspeed but our true airspeed is increasing and our ground speed is increasing. I'm not sure why these are differing in the climb but you'll notice whenever we get level that both of them are the same if there's a still wind. Uh, the reason for that is as we climb the air is getting less dense so the aircraft is trying to maintain to fly at 250 knots indicated so it's keeping 250 knots worth of those little air molecules flying into the pitot tube and as a result of that, it's having to actually fly faster through the air mass and because the air is less dense. So you can see our true air speed is increasing, which is what exactly you would expect in the real world. Right, so now we are at 30, sorry, 27,000 feet. Uh, we're doing 250 knots indicated air speed still. You can see our true air speed has increased and also here and our ground speed has remained the same. So now I'll just show you quickly if we have a tailwind component or a headwind component, what will happen. Right, so this is about a 30 knot headwind. You can see we've maintained the same indicated airspeed, but our, uh, and our true airspeed has stayed the same, but our ground speed has reduced. Now we'll look at a, a 30 knot tailwind. Okay, so now we've got a 30 knot uh, tailwind or thereabouts. So you can see indicated airspeed still the same, our true airspeed still the same, and our ground speed is increased now. So uh, we're going to take that wind off. So now we're going to have a look at Mach number. So we saw down below at uh, 1000 feet our Mach number at 250 knots indicated airspeed uh, was like 200 or sorry was 0.3 something like that. So if we click the Mach number button now what we're expecting is our Mach number would be significantly more because as altitude increases the speed of sound decreases and therefore our relative speed has remained the same indicated but our relative speed to the uh, speed of sound will have increased so let's click the button yeah so it says 0.629 so nearly double and 27,000 feet is roughly in the region in an airliner where you would switch to use a Mach number and um, what we'll do now is we'll um, maintain 250 knots so you'd normally switch over to Mach number now and you would fly the Mach number that you wanted uh, but let's maintain 250 knots, let's fly up to 37,000 feet and we'll see uh, what our Mach number is like up there. Uh, so one thing I forgot to mention in the climb, uh, because we fly at a Mach number at higher altitude, you will, um, and there's a few reasons for that, but one of, the, one of the reasons as well is that the aircraft becomes limited by the Mach number and not our indicated airspeed. So you will see that the, what you call the barber's pole, the overspeed indicator, that white and red pole, will start coming down as we climb higher and the speed of sound becomes less on our indicated speed. You'll see that barber's pole moving down as our limiting Mach number um, gets closer to our indicated airspeed. So you'll see that shortly. And there it is, coming down now. Right, so here we are at 37,000 feet. And... Um, you can see that our indicator airspeed is still 250 knots. The barber's pull, as we call it, which is our limiting Mach number here, has uh, come down into our indicated airspeed. So that's our that's now our point of overspeed because we're now on Mach number. And if we kept climbing up, eventually you would see the stall speed would also increase, and you would end up in a position that we call coffin corner, 
and that means that you only have very very small margin for error uh, between um, your error speeds and you could end up in a stall situation or an overspeed situation very easily. Uh, so this is something that we would watch uh, in our liners in the cruise a lot, especially if we start hitting turbulence we would be uh, very aware of our speed. Uh, if we were close to the barber's pole we'd be watching it like a hawk to make sure that if the speed increased too much uh, we'd maybe pop out a little bit of speed brake or something and just keep it out of the overspeed. Um, so what else we're going to look at, so we're doing 250 knots still, you can see our tree air speed's obviously increased, likewise uh, our ground speed has as well, um, and you can see that they're still very very close, and they would change um, only really if there's any wind, uh, there would be only a significant change then. Um, so yeah, that's all there is really to say about those, ground speed's the most useful. Let's click the Mac number button, and then see what our Mac number is now. So we're now doing Mach decimal 76, so we're doing 76% of the speed of sound. Hope all of that's helped um, kind of explain our speeds and uh, the, the main ones we need to be aware of. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, if you like the video, please like it and please subscribe for more tutorials in the future. Thank you.